Hello kids! This is Mama Lely. Um, this is going to be the last day of our discussion about uh, different measures of interest. Okay? So this is the outline of topics that we are going to have for today. But before we continue our discussion, let's have a quick recap of our past lesson. Okay, let's recall these two important functions. Let's have the accumulation function first. Okay, suppose we have 500 at time 0. We want to get the value of this 500 at time 4. Okay, so you may consider there are four periods here or there are four years here. Okay. So, from the timeline, it is obvious that you want to carry 500 forward. Okay? And how do we do that? We just use this accumulation function A of T, which is equal to 1 plus I raised to T. Your I here is the effective rate of interest per period. And your T is the number of years na dadaanan nyo sa pagbuhat ninyo nung 500 in our example. So, the value of 500 at time 4 is equal to 500 times 1 plus I raised to 4. And we call this value as the accumulated value. It is the future value of 500. Okay? Notice that 500 times 1 plus i raised to 4, this is basically your capital A of T. What is your capital of A of T again? That is your amount function. And your amount function is equal to K, which is 500 in this example. That's the principal amount, times the small A of T. This is our small a of t. Okay? Take note that I automatically use the compound interest rate assumption. Again, kapag simple interest rate assumption, ang gagamitin, i-indicate ko yun sa problem. Okay? Pero kung walang naka-indicate, automatically you are going to use the compound interest rate assumption. Okay? And you always recall or remember that if you have a constant compound interest rate, your effective rate of interest is also constant and that is equal to your constant compound interest rate. Okay? Okay. Moving on, let's have this second example. Okay? You have a 200, an amount of 200 at time 5. And you want to get the value of this 200 at time 2. If you check the timeline, it's like carrying carrying 200 backward. Okay? It's from here going here. Okay? So how do we do that? We make use of the discount function V of T. Or v to the t that's our discount function okay we can relate v to the t to our effective rate of interest okay and this is how we do it your v to the t is equal to one plus i raised to negative t okay so that's why the value of 200 here at time two is equal to 200 times v raised to three why 3? Because tatlong periods ang dinaanan ng 200 bago siya makarating sa time 2. Okay? And that's, this is what we call the present value. Okay? But please take note of this um, statement. If the valuation date is not specified, unlike in our example, I specified that you are going to value 200 at time 2, 
but it's not if it's not specified you evaluate the present value at time zero okay let's move on we also recall some established identities or relationships among different measures of interest that we had last saturday so here you just imagine accumulating one unit or one peso to time one let's continue okay what are equivalent rates so you say two measures of interest rate are equivalent if they will give you the same accumulated value okay for the same length of time of course okay let's have a very clear example here okay suppose we have 500 at time zero we want to get the value of 500 at time six okay do you see two timelines here the first timeline makes use of the nominal rate of interest convertible twice a year okay let's consider let's have let's consider six years here okay so you use i upper two so it is convertible twice a year so ibig sabihin semi-annual or every six months ang compounding well the second timeline makes use of the effective rate of discount okay d this gives the value of 500 at time six using i upper two this one is the accumulated value of 500 using d now if they give the same accumulated value like this one you say your i upper two and your d are equivalent rates because um for the same length of time so six years here they give the same accumulated value okay and please notice if you, you can cancel 500 here can cancel this 500 and this 500 if you do that you will be having this only this one the the rate one plus i upper two over two raised to 12 equals one minus d raised to negative six which is basically here in our established relationship among different measures of interest okay so kapag pinapahanap kayo ng equivalent rates all you have to do is to recall this um identities tapos i-apply nyo lang ito i-substitute nyo lang kung ano yung mga or kung ano yung given okay at saka kung ano yung hinahanap okay for example um the given is d this one is given and you're looking for the equivalent i the effective rate of interest so you have to make use one plus i equals one minus d raised to negative one okay and then you substitute the given value of d and then you will eventually know or compute the value of i okay i hope that is clear we now move on to another measure of interest this is the nominal rate of discount and we use d upper p as our symbol for that nominal rate of discount well dapat madali na ito kasi kapareho lang ito or similar ito doon sa nominal rate of interest that we discussed last saturday kung yung nominal rate of interest is accumulating m times a given period or for simply simplicity m times a year this nominal rate of discount naman is 
it's like discounting p times a year or p times a given period in general okay so the same if d, d upper p is the nominal rate of discount your d upper p divided by p this is going to be the effective rate of discount for each p -et of a period okay to visualize that let's consider this timeline actually this is one period only you see time zero to time one so this is one period and this one is subdivided into p subdivisions okay so this is the first subdivision this is the second subdivision and then this is the p -et. the p -et subdivision is equal to one okay one year or one period okay so we have an amount here and then we're going to discount it or to get the present value of this at time zero okay using the nominal rate of discount okay so where is one period ito, ito, ito. Isang period ito. this one ito, one period and then what is the effective rate for this period the effective rate for this period is the d upper p over p that's the effective rate of discount for this very or for this one subdivision okay okay so that's why we have for the first subdivision if you want to carry one to this point you multiply one by one minus d upper p over p okay and then you multiply again by one minus d upper p over p to carry it again here okay using one period again and so on until you reach time zero okay this is the discount factor to reach the t equals zero one minus d upper p over p the last factor okay and then we know that if you multiply this or we all know that we have p factors here so that's why we have one minus d upper p over p raised to p okay that's how you get the present value of one here by this is how you get the present value of one here by discounting it p times now we can also discount this to time zero using the effective rate of discount not the nominal rate of discount the effective rate of discount so that means we're going to carry this one unit here to time zero ng isang laktaw lang talaga isang ganun lang ganun unlike the nominal rate of discount we discount one unit here p times but using the effective rate of discount for one period up to here or for one year we simply multiply one by one minus d okay and then we say d and the upper p are equivalent rates and this is how you write it so you have one minus d equals one minus d upper p over p raised to p okay so we can now include the, the nominal rate of discount to our established identities okay why a negative exponent here because we make use of the accumulating process, not the discounting process. Kasi dito, this discounting process ang ginamit natin. Dito, accumulating ang sinunod natin like this, or oh, 1 plus i. This is accumulating to time 1. So then, accumulating to time 1. And then, we know the relationship of 1 plus i and the v, right? 
it's 1 plus i equals v to the negative 1. And v is equal to 1 minus d. And we just copy the negative 1 here. And then 1 minus d, we're able to relate 1 minus d to the upper p. It's like this one. Okay? So, kinopia lang natin. And then, we just copy the negative 1 here. Okay? Let's have some examples. Basic example. Let's have I equals 8%. Now, we are going to determine the equivalent I upper 12. That's the nominal rate of interest convertible every month. Okay? Or convertible monthly. Okay? And then find the upper... Four, that's the nominal rate of discount convertible quarterly or four times a year. All right, so since we're given I and we're looking for I upper 12 and the upper 4, so from the given identities here, so pipili lang tayo kung alin yung gagamitin natin. So obviously, we need this 1 plus I equals 1 plus i upper m over m raised to m. And also, the 1 minus d upper p over p raised to negative p. Okay, here you go. And then, that's it. You solve for i upper m here in the first equation. Okay, and you're going to have this. And then, you solve d upper p using 1 plus i equals this one. So, you will have this. Your d upper p is this one. So, all you have to do is to substitute i equals 8% here, m equals 12. And then, you will get 0 0.0772. Here naman, you substitute p equals 4 and i equals 8%. When you do that, you will get 0 0.0762. Okay, another example. Okay, so the example, I, I have a timeline here for the example. You have the 1,000 times 0, and you want to get the value of 1,000 at time 6. Or we can consider, yeah, ito naman, from the example, at the end of 6 years. So, there are 6 years here and we want to get the accumulated value of 1,000. So, if we go back, ang alam natin to accumulate a certain amount is with the use of our accumulation function, which is 1 plus i raised to t. So, doon tayo magsimula kasi yun naman talaga yung alam natin. So, that's why we have 1,000 times 1 plus i raised to 6. Ito yung basic na alam natin. Diba? After writing the basic, you now recall yung established identities natin. Okay? So, I think ang pinakamabilis natin may isip na equal sa 1 plus i is v to the negative 1. Kasi yan yung kauna-unahan natin na established na identity. Okay? So, we may replace a 1 plus i by v to the negative 1. And then we, we try to think more. Paano ba natin i -re relate si V kay D? And then eventually kay D upper 2. Right? Kasi D upper 2 ang given. So dapat mapalabas natin sa equation ng D upper 2. So we know that V, so we ignore muna the negative 1 here, V is equal to 1 minus D. And then 1 minus D is equal to 1 minus d upper p over p raised to p. So that's why we have this one. Okay? Your v is equal to 1 minus d upper p or d upper 2 over 2 raised to 2. And then I just copied the negative 1 here. Negative 1, I multiplied negative 1 to 2. Okay? And then, of course, I copied 6 here. Okay? Well, kung sanay na sanay naman na kayo, pwede nang diretso. Like, 1,000 times 1 minus d upper 2 over 2 raised to negative 12. Okay? 
Okay. Pwedeng diretsyo na. Kapag sanay na, sanay na, sanay na, sanay na kayo. Okay? And then, using your calculator, you will get 1,355.0166. Again, four decimal places at least. Okay? And then, always remember, you round off only kapag nasa final answers na kayo. Huwag kayong mag-round off sa gitna or in the middle of your solution. Okay? Kasi magkakaroon siya ng epekto sa final answer. So, sa final answer lang kayo mag-round off. Okay? Alright. Moving on. Let's have this nominal rates at unusual frequencies. Okay, so halos pareho lang ito doon sa nominal rate of interest at sa nominal rate of discount. Unusual frequencies kasi bihira ninyo itong makikita or bihira itong ginagamit. Okay? Our notation for that, for example, for the nominal rate of interest, we have I upper 1 over R. So, para mas na-imagine ninyo, di ba yung nauna nating nominal rate of interest, for example, in one year, kapag I upper 2, ibig sabihin nun, nagko-convert ang interest every 6 months. Kasi ang ibig sabihin ng I upper 2, twice a year. Ngayon, kapag ginawa ko namang I upper 1 half, Ibig sabihin naman nun, magko-convert yung interest every two years. Okay? So, unusual yun kasi more than a year yung compounding. Okay? So, similar lang din naman ang explanation for the nominal rate of discount at unusual frequencies. Okay? Uh, let's have this timeline. Okay? Ito yung one period. 0, 1. Or you may consider it as 1 year. Ito yung 1 year. Okay? Pag sinabing compounded once every R periods, ibig sabihin itong, itong ito, itong 1 unit dito at time 0, kaya mo tong i-accumulate ng isang laktaw lang dito agad sa R. Like isang arrow going to R. And how are you going to do that? You multiply one unit here by this one. 1 plus 1 upper 1 over R over 1 over R. Okay? This I upper 1 over R divided by 1 over R. This is the effective rate of interest for this period. From 0 to R. Parang consider dyan as one big period. Okay? So that's why to carry one unit at time 0, here, okay, isang, isang buhatan lang yan, you multiply it by the effective rate of interest for that big period plus 1. Okay? But using... I, as the effective rate of interest per year, for example, or per period, kunyari ito, 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 isang period na yan. So, let's say I is the effective rate of interest for this one period to accumulate one unit to this point. So, all you have to do is you multiply one unit by 1 plus I raised to R. Why raised to R? Because R small periods ang dadaanan ninyo bago nyo ma-reach yung time na ito. T equals R. Okay? So, from that relationship, we will have this. We were able to relate the effective rate of interest I to the nominal rate of interest I raised to 1 over R. Okay? So, I will not do it for the nominal rate of discount kasi parehas lang yon. Okay? So, kaya nilagay ko na lang dyan. Similarly, we have that relationship. So, alam nyo na what to expect. Madadagdagan na naman natin yung established identities. So, dapat 
by now, um, nagsa-start na kayong mag-memorize ng identities na yun. Kasi napaka-importante nung mga identities or nung relationship among different measures of interest na yun. Okay? Ito yan. Diba? Ang dami na. So again, how to justify this relationships? You have to imagine the accumulate one unit method at time one. Okay? Ito yung time diagram yan. You have one unit at time zero, and then you're going to accumulate it here at time one. You find the accumulated value. And everything will follow. Okay? And dami na, no? So please, please study. Okay? So I think isang measure na lang ng interest ang naiiwan. And then we're done.